What's up guys, this is Adam with TAT Express. And in this video, I will discuss what is a spun bearing, what causes it, and what you can do to avoid it. Guys, this is an educational video, so if you like this type of content, be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. If you'd like to schedule service, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. Let's get right into this video. Okay, so let's discuss what is a spun bearing. A main bearing or a rod bearing, whenever they spin in its position and lock up the engine or any time that it spins, you can either have one that spins and put a rod out or it spins and in its position and ends up seizing the engine is what mostly happens or locks the engine up. Now, let me explain how these bearings work. You have two piece bearings. This is our rod bearings here. Now, whenever you put this this rod together, this is the bottom piece of the rod. You have one bearing that sits in right here and the other top section of the rod. This one's still in the engine, but I'm gonna show you later is the top part of the rod. So the rod assembly sits on top and then of course you have your bolts that bolt the rod, the rod bearings together. And what happens is there's drilled oil galleries in the crank that feed these, these journals, that feed these bearings and lubricates them. So there's a thin film of oil that's always working in between these bearings all the time and it's designed it is designed to wear but not until over a million miles and what happens is when they are worn as they're supposed to be not like this they are able to be replaced and this is so that you can rebuild an engine if necessary now over time you will have regular wear and you will have wear on your bearings and you start having low oil pressure but this, this is actually not normal wear. You can see in, in this particular bearing, there's a lot of shavings that it's already come off. You can see the metal. These are pieces of metal that come off this particular bearing. Now what happens when that bearing, when that metal starts coming off that bearing more and more and, and actually makes the, the, bearing, uh, the bearing clearance, the bearing clearance here a lot larger, that gives this bearing more room to actually spin in its place. So what it happens is it is spin like this. And when that happens, you have all this tight clearance in between the, the crankshaft and, and the rod bearings. And, and what happens is it ends up locking the engine up. The engine is not able to rotate anymore. And that's what seizes the engine and locks it up. Now, what causes this? Let's talk about what causes this. There's different things that cause this. There's contamination. When coolant gets into your oil, Oil is not able to, able to do its job. It's actually mixed with coolant and it ends up getting hot and burns the bearing. It gets too hot because coolant and oil do not mix. And when it does, it is mixed. You have little sections of coolant that runs in between these journals. Now, all the time when this engine's running, there's drilled oil galleries that are feeding oil in each of these journals. And there's a, fi a thin film line of, of oil that's always running in between these bearings. Now, if you have contamination, coolant contamination, or debris get into the oil, coolant will heat the bearings up, will cause it to excessively wear and, and can may cause a spin. Or if you have contamination, contamination from a broken standpipe or a dirty oil change, that will also cause excessive contamination. And when you have dirt get into these bearings, it's gonna scrape the metal over time, removing that metal, creating a bigger clearance, and that's what ends up causing the main bearing to spin. I'm gonna show you the actual damage on the crank. This particular engine will need to be replaced. Anytime you have a spun bearing, it's gonna to be tough to get that repaired. I do not recommend if you have a spun main bearing to replace the crank and put new bearings. That is not a good practice. You're gonna do a lot of work. You're gonna spend a lot of money. You're gonna put that engine together. And guess what? You have a high probability of that engine of spinning another bearing. And the reason why that happens is when this bearing is spun, when it spins in its place, it's not designed whether it's a rod bearing or a crank bearing. This is a crank bearing here. You can see that this is, you can see the excessive wear coming off these. These are scrapes coming into that bearing. When that happens and that bearing spins in its place, it's either gonna take metal off the block. And when that happens and you're only gonna replace the crank and put new metal, new bearings, that's gonna give you a high chance of that, of that bearing spinning again. Now, I wanna discuss what you can do to prevent this. Now, in this particular engine, this is a DD15 platform, you wanna check out for the oil standpipe. If you haven't looked at my video about the failed oil standpipe, check that video out. 
It's a standpipe that bypasses the oil filter whenever you're changing it. And if that standpipe is broken, and of course you can get a lot of debris in there. If you're having the engine worked on in an outside area where there's a lot of dust and the oil pan is off for a long period of time, dirt can get blown up and, and upside the engine and, and the oil gets really tacky. You can, you can, dirt can, can stick to oil really easily. So when that engine gets put back together and you, you're running it, of course, that's excessive debris in there. Now what you can do to avoid this is work in a clean area. Check out that oil standpipe every time you do a PM. Now a PM is a preventive maintenance, which is an oil change, greasing, fuel filter, oil filters. When you pull that oil filter, you wanna go ahead and check that standpipe. Like I mentioned, check out my standpipe video, broken standpipe video, if you got any more concerns about that. Now if coolant gets in the engine, of course you wanna be able to shut that engine down right away. If you can tell you have contaminants in your oil, shut that engine down, do not run it, and get it to a shop as soon as you can. Replace the oil, figure out where, how the contaminants are getting in there, get it cleaned up and if you see that you don't have excessive wear um, what we do is when we have excessive wear usually you'll have a check engine light that gives you a warning letting you know that you have low oil pressure do not ignore that get it checked out and what we do is we'll pull a bearing to make sure it's not worn this is this is what PSL asks us to do this is what you'll do on any engine if you have low oil pressure or a contaminated oil for a long period of time now as I mentioned working in a clean environment, making sure if you do have coolant loss and you don't see it on the ground or you don't see it anywhere else, make sure you get that checked out. If you have oil level rising, guys, I would check my oil at least once a week and try to notate if you need to, take a picture of where your oil is sitting. So when you dip, put your dipstick in, your engine's been sitting for about five minutes, not running, and you check your oil level, if you need to, take a picture of that. And next week, the following week, and you're stopped again, five minutes, check it again, take a picture of it, and you're gonna see your reference, where your oil's at. You want your, if your oil's going down a little bit, that's normal, but if, you're, if it's starting to go up, that means you're having something going into the oil pan. Whether it's coolant or diesel going in there, that's contaminants, that's not supposed to go in the oil. And diesel will do the same damage as coolant when it's mixed with the oil. It would heat the journals up, and cause these bearings to wear, heat up excessively, metal will start coming off those bearings and you have a high chance of that bearing spinning again. So those are the, those are the actions that you can do to avoid this to happen in you. That's what a spun bearing is. Usually, if you have a bearing that's not excessively worn like this, you can just replace the bearings and still be good. You want to check the crank. I want to show you the excessive wear on this particular crank, and unfortunately, this engine is going to need to be replaced. We won't be able to replace the crank and just do all the hardware. We're going to have to actually replace the entire engine. And I want to give you the story. This engine, this engine, this particular truck was brought into us, towed into us, and he had a low engine light. He took it into a shop and they replaced the oil pickup tube O-rings, which is very common on a DD-15. They replaced that, but what they didn't do is they didn't prime the system with oil. When you do that type of service, this is a very common, common repair when you do the, the, the DD-15 oil pickup tube O-rings. When you do that, you need to prime the engine with oil. Whenever you pull that oil pump off in your oil manifold, what happens is that all that oil that's primed into the engine is basically drained out. So when you put all the hardware back together and you go to crank that engine, you're running that engine and it's possibly you're starving the oil. That is mostly the main cause whenever you see a spun bearing is gonna be oil starvation. That's, that's a more, that's, that happens more than contamination, but more and more you can see both of them. The more we see is on the DD-15 is when you have oil starvation run for a long time and this is what happens. You spun, you spin a bearing and this guy, of course, he's still going to have to replace the engine, but some guys I've seen the rod comp comes completely out of the engine. And, and the reason why that happens is, is when this rod bearing is together like this and say it doesn't spin, say it still stays together like this, or if it did spin, now you have, if it overlaps itself all the way, you have this excessive space on this other side so that that piston is going to start blop, blop knocking itself and what those bolts are not able to hold together and those bolts will break and once those break say the rod the rod breaks those bolts break and it's still pushing that rod up and down now that rod is not able to circulate or, or rotate correctly and it can get into an angle and boom straight out the side of the block we've seen it we've seen it times before
and we don't want that happening to you. Now let's move over under the engine. I wanna show you the damage on the crank and the reason why we're gonna to have to replace this engine. Okay, so we're under the engine. We have the oil pan off, engine's overhead. This is the rod, rod section of the crank and this is the main bearing section of the crank. There's not that much damage. Uh, I don't feel any much, a lot of damage here on the main part of the, uh, of the crank. But as you can see, the difference from something that doesn't have damage to something that has a lot of damage. You can see PSL says if you can fill it with your fingernail, it needs to be replaced. Uh, definitely you can see how, how much wear that is. We don't want anybody in this position, but this is what happens. As I mentioned, the oil is working its way. This is the, the piston is still in here. We have the top part of the bearing down here. So when you have the pieces together, this is the, the top part of the burnt bearing is gonna be on the top part of the piston. And this is the, the rod bearing cap. This goes here and there's journals drilled inside this crank. You cannot see it, but there's on the top side of this crank is where the oil is drilled um, and our oil gallery is drilled into the crank and that's where the oil is being fed the entire time that the engine is running. And, that, and when, any, when you have any contaminants or if you have oil starvation, this engine is just rotating, this crank is rotating at, I mean, you can, you can see your RPMs, that's, that's, rev, that's reps per, per minute. So if you're going at, even at idle, you're doing almost uh, five to a thousand, to uh, a thousand uh, uh, revs per minute. Um, that, that's a lot of rotations per minute. And while you're driving, you're giving it gas, of course you're rotating that engine even more and more and a lot faster. So engine, engine oil is very crucial at those points so that this engine doesn't get overheated. These journals don't get overheated. And as I mentioned, if you get cooling in here, it's gonna overheat the bearing or if you have oil starvation, it's gonna just be, this, is, this particular bearing is an indication of oil starvation. You can see, let me get the angle right. You can see this, this bearing is just completely gone. This is an oil starvation. This is basically what caused this, this, uh, this particular engine to seize up. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. I hope this information was useful. I hope this information was useful. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, you can call us at 972-225-3017. We are located at 4140 Langdon Road, Dallas, Texas 75241. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you're notified when we go live or when we release a new video. And until next time, be safe.